All right, uh, so without any further ado, we have Frido presenting Thought, the Healing Python Applications. So take it away. Thank you. So hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this presentation uh, that will be a set uh, about healing Python applications. And in this talk, we will talk about things that are developed in uh, Thought. So uh, let's get started. Uh, before we start, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Fridolin. You can find me as uh, under acronym Fridex or um, on Twitter or on GitHub. And I'm a TOT member since 2019. So uh, that's uh, basically from, from the beginning of uh, the project. Uh, I like Python. Actually, I love Python and I do road cycling. Now, when it comes to TOT, uh, that's a uh, it was a research project that started in AICOE team in the office of the CTO. And one of the main offerings uh, we do is a cloud-based Python resolver. You can visit us on Station Ninja webpage where you can browse uh, documentation, but also links uh, to YouTube channel where you can find our demos or uh, Twitter uh, where we post uh, periodic updates. So as stated, one of the main offerings we have is a, a Python resolver that is run in the cloud. Uh, basically, it's not just a resolver, but it's a recommendation engine for Python applications. And we will talk about main features uh, and why uh, the recommendation engine can be suitable for developers. Uh, the recommendation engine is publicly available to the community, so you can use it. And the core uh, of this recommendation engine is a stochastic resolver this, that is implementing gradient-free reinforcement learning methods. In production, we run tem temporal difference learning, and that's something we will talk about more uh, in this presentation. If you are interested in details, how the core mechanics and how the resolver is uh, designed, you can browse documentation that is available uh, online. Okay, so if you uh, ever if you've ever used Python, you probably know pip that's the uh, Python installer that can install dependencies into your environment. So if you have a, de a dependency, you simply pip install it and it's downloaded the the resolution process uh, also resolves dependencies that are needed to uh, install the library, and then you can use the library. Now, uh, what we uh, do, we offer an alternative that is a CLI tool called Tamos, and uh, you can install Tamos uh, using pip. And once you have Tamos in your environment, then uh, Tamos can generate a configuration file for you that is subsequently used in uh, the uh, cloud resolver. So if you want to give uh, Tot a try, you simply can issue pip install Tamos, Tamos config that will generate a configuration file, and then you can do Tamos advice that will uh, take uh, the configuration file and uh, together with requirements of your application, uh, we'll send them to the uh, cloud resolver. Now, why the configuration file is needed? As the resolution process is not done locally, as in case of PIP, the backend resolver needs to know uh, how to behave in this resolution. So uh, the configuration uh, file states information such as operating system that you use, uh, Python interpreter version that you use, but also other aspects that are not considered uh, in PIP, such as uh, CUDA version that uh, you have available, but also base uh, container image that you are running. So the resolution process is really specific to your runtime environment. Uh, besides software information that is captured in Tamos config, uh, Tamos uh, also uh, captures information about hardware that is available on your uh, host. So it captures information about CPU and GPU. And this is uh, valuable to the resolver because uh, if you if the resolver is targeting uh, performant uh, applications that we will talk about later, then the resolver uh, can take into account also hardware information that is available on the host. Uh, besides this information, uh, the Tamos config also 
can optionally uh, gather information about uh, source code for which the recommendation is computed. So uh, Tamos config, sorry, Tamos advice under the hood performs static source code analysis and extracts information such as uh, what libraries are used in your sources as well as uh, what uh, symbols from these uh, Python libraries are used. Uh, then uh, there's one additional option that is recommendation type. And this recommendation type uh, basically says uh, intention with the application uh, that you have. So if you are developing an application that should be uh, secure, should, should not have any uh, security vulnerabilities, uh, then the resolution process can look differently uh, in opposite to a resolution process that is targeting a very, perform very well performing uh, software used for training machine learning models, for example. So this is all uh, input to the cloud-based cloud resolver. And the cloud-based resolver uses uh, this input together with knowledge that is aggregated uh, about uh, Python packages, but also about runtime environments and uh, can uh, resolve uh, software packages so that it provides log file together with some justification that uh, says why the given log file uh, with a set of packages should be used. Uh, as uh, stated before, uh, the recommendation engine uses uh, reinforcement learning. Uh, this, uh, uh, this feature or this uh, implementation of reinforcement learning was brought to the resolver to come up with uh, the best or the most suitable set of uh, libraries that should be installed into your environment. If you consider all these inputs uh, that are uh, going to the resolver and uh, all the possible versions uh, that are uh, available out there, versions of Python libraries, but versions of uh, CUDA, uh, versions of operating systems and stuff like that, then you can see, you can imagine that there's a wide range of possible resolutions and all depend on requirements on your uh, software environment and on, on your uh, hardware. So there's possibly infinite uh, state space of all the possible resolutions. So the resolver needs to somehow know how to uh, navigate in this state space and how to resolve the most uh, and the best uh, possible software uh, uh, libraries that you can use. On each request, we train a model. Uh, so uh, the resolution, uh, uh, each time you submit a request to Resolver, the resolution trains a model, uh, which per, uh, uh, and Resolver uh, first performs exploration phase, where when Resolver checks what are the possibilities, how to how it can resolve software packages, and subsequently Resolver uh, performs a, a exploitation phase. So based on uh, knowledge that it aggregated in the exploration phase. Uh, then the resolver can come up with uh, the resolved software stack that is uh, considered the most, the most suitable for your runtime environment where your Python application runs in. The whole resolution process uh, is then treated as a resolution pipeline. And this pipeline is made out of uh, units of different type. There are core or base pipeline unit types uh, that are registered in the resolution process. And then you can also extend the resolution process by implementing your own uh, pipeline units that are of specific type. And the type uh, uh, distinguishes when these pipeline units are called and also the semantics behind uh, these pipeline units. Uh, the implementation of uh, the recommendation engine can um, uh, pro or provides a uh, way to uh, extend the resolution process by implementing these pipeline units. And uh, this extension can be uh, done either in Python code, or you can declaratively uh, provide YAML files that are automatically uh, taken uh, uh, into account in deployment, loaded by the recommendation engine, and can adjust the resolution process uh, in a way that the most suitable uh, packages are uh, resolved. 
Uh, the pipeline is again constructed dynamically. So on each request, uh, pipeline is uh, constructed based on inputs to the resolver and also uh, based on uh, the knowledge that is aggregated uh, in a Python ecosystem. Now let's focus on the declarative interface for the resolver and let's check uh, these uh, YAML files, how uh, they are written and uh, how they can be used. These YAML files are called prescriptions and they prescribe some, some rules how to heal uh, Python applications. So uh, these prescriptions uh, form a declarative interface to the cloud resolver. If you are familiar with OpenShift or Kubernetes, you have manifest files uh, that you apply to the cluster. And these manifest files uh, basically state desired state of the cluster. Similarly, these uh, prescriptions uh, can be applied to the resolver. But in this case, they somehow adjust the resolution process in a way that resolver comes with the most suitable software packages that you can use in your application. Uh, as stated before, these YAML files are automatically consumed by resolver in a deployment and are versioned. So uh, we do releases of these YAML files uh, as well. If you are interested in a uh, prescription concept uh, and you would like to write your uh, prescriptions, feel free to browse documentation that is available on our uh, homepage. Now, uh, let's take a look at some examples. So uh, these prescriptions were designed to help resolving high quality software. That means that sometimes some releases uh, create some uh, runtime errors or undesired uh, behavior uh, that uh, uh, library maintainers uh, did not test it or simply uh, there is some misbehavior in libraries. So here you can see uh, the very first example, in which case uh, pillow in version 8.3.0 does not work uh, with uh, any NumPy. So if you install pillow together with NumPy, below in that specific version, you will always get this uh, uh, type error that is raised on runtime. The issue was reported uh, on upstream and uh, newer releases of below uh, do not have this, uh, this uh, issue. However, uh, if you need to stick with older version of below uh, for, uh, for some reason, um, this uh, issue can arise. Uh, note also that even if this issue uh, was seen in older versions uh, of, of below, uh, that doesn't mean that uh, the resolver always comes with the newest below. Uh, the version that is resolved uh, depends also on other dependencies. So if there are shared uh, subgraphs in dependency graph, uh, dependency resolvers uh, can come up with uh, below 8.3.0 that will uh, cause these runtime errors in your applications. So to bypass, bypass this, uh, we can create a prescription uh, in a, a dot that will uh, avoid installing below uh, together with NumPy. So here you can see a YAML file that uh, states uh, the prescription. As you can see, it uh, is created out of multiple sections. So the very first section states uh, units uh, that are uh, declared in the, in the specific uh, prescription. Uh, in this case, we are using a pipeline unit uh, that is of type step. So this is specific uh, to a step that is performed during the resolution process. And uh, the name of uh, this uh, pipeline unit is uh, pillow 830 type error step. Uh, this name is used uh, in the resolution process to uniquely identify uh, this pipeline unit in logs or uh, when uh, checking uh, prescription uh, schema. Uh, now, the next section uh, says should include, uh, which has just one di directive and it is uh, advised pipeline true, which basically says that this prescription is used uh, during recommendations. Uh, in the upcoming uh, examples, we will see other uh, declaratives that can be 
uh, stated in the should include section and um, they additionally configure when the given pipeline unit uh, should be present in the in the resolution uh, the next uh, part of uh, this step pipeline unit says uh, when the uh, pipeline unit run should be triggered uh, this is the match section that says uh, the pipeline unit should be run when below in that specific version coming from uh, PyPI org uh, uh, is about to be resolved and resolver has already uh, one dependency uh, that is resolved and that is numpy. This is not specific to any uh, this is not specific to any numpy version as can be seen and also uh, not specific to any numpy coming from a different index uh, than PyPI org. Now the final section that is run uh, states uh, how uh, the pipeline unit should behave when the run is actually triggered. So here you can see uh, the uh, that uh, pipeline unit does not accept uh, the step that is performed by the resolver. So uh, there, you, there you can see not acceptable below in version 8.3.0 does not work with the given NumPy. And then there is also provided some information to the user uh, that uh, this uh, pipeline unit uh, this, this discarded uh, the given uh, step. So, uh, users of TOT can see uh, this in uh, in the resolution block. Okay, so now let's take a look at another example uh, that is adjusting requirements in GPU enabled uh, environments. Uh, if you are if you are not familiar with TensorFlow, TensorFlow is a machine learning uh, library uh, and uh, its dependency graph is uh, quite interesting. So uh, that's why I will uh, use TensorFlow uh, as an example in these slides. So uh, here you can see that uh, we have uh, TensorFlow GPU pseudonym and uh, the pipeline unit that we will uh, see shortly uh, considers TensorFlow GPU as a pseudonym to TensorFlow package. If the environment cons uh, if the environment has a GPU. So uh, let's take a look at prescription. Uh, all the examples that, we, that I will show onwards uh, live in .station prescriptions repository, and that's the uh, publicly available uh, repository of prescriptions uh, that the public instance of uh, TOT, the cloud-based resolver, is using during uh, the resolution. So here you can see uh, the prescription. Uh, now, uh, the pipeline unit has different type uh, and uh, that's pseudonym. Here you can see that uh, the pipeline unit is registered if the given runtime environment has CUDA or CUDNN uh, configured. Not or, but uh, both are configured uh, in the runtime environment. And then we are matching uh, packages uh, such as TensorFlow, Intel TensorFlow, Intel CPU coming from uh, PyPI.org. And if the resolution process finds uh, uh, or encounters these packages, then um, the recommendation engine uh, resolves or considers TensorFlow GPU as an alternative to uh, these uh, packages stated. So here you can see uh, 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 prescription. Uh, the version that is uh, considered as an alternative is the same as the uh, matched version of, uh, of uh, these packages. And then you can see again some log message and information uh, provided to users. Then another uh, example uh, considers uh, versions of uh, CUDA so uh, that TensorFlow GPU is uh, the version of TensorFlow GPU is uh, correctly resolved. Uh, TensorFlow uh, has support metrics when it comes to uh, CUDA and CUDNN. Uh, it's sometimes it, sometimes it causes headache, headaches to match these versions, uh, but this cloud-based resolver knows how to resolve TensorFlow GPU in specific versions so that uh, the CUDA is utilized and uh, the right TensorFlow GPU is uh, used with the supported uh, CUDA uh, 
The same uh, applies to CU DNN, uh, that is uh, basically uh, another library used by TensorFlow. So here you can see CU DNN version. Uh, as you can see, uh, these pipeline units can be uh, can be uh, very atomic pieces and can form uh, form re a complex resolution process that is uh, respecting rules or prescriptions that are uh, applied. Another example is uh, fixing library overpinning issues. So in Python ecosystem, you can spot that uh, libraries uh, provide too broad range of supported of of uh, supported versions uh, that are claimed to work. So here, TensorFlow in version 2.1.0 and compatible uh, overpinned uh, version H5Py. So uh, this prescription unit that is of type step uh, makes sure uh, that uh, H5Py is resolved uh, in a correct version that works together with TensorFlow. Let's move on to the next example, and that is uh, using specific Python package index uh, that provides uh, optimized wheel builds. Again, uh, we have example uh, with TensorFlow. So here you can see uh, that when users use AVX2 enabled processors, uh, then uh, there is considered, um, or sorry, a prioritized uh, build that is uh, that is available on the AICOE TensorFlow index. So in this case, uh, TensorFlow in any version coming from uh, this uh, index will be uh, scored positively and will take precedence uh, in the resolution process over, over other uh, builds of TensorFlow. Here you can see that this recommendation, uh, this, that this pipeline unit is applied uh, when people ask for performance, secure or stable software stack. Let's move on to example number five. In this example, we will see uh, static source code analysis uh, in action. So if you are a Python coder and you know this mktemp uh, function that is provided by temp file module, uh, you probably know that this uh, function is uh, deprecated due to uh, security vulnerability uh, in uh, race when or is vulnerable to race conditions. It's also, this is also stated in the official uh, Python documentation. So this prescription uh, uh, warns users about this fact when they use latest performance or stable or testing uh, stacks. On the other hand, when people or users of thought want to resolve secure software stacks, then the prescription uh, uh, errors and prints this error to users. So if uh, this uh, library function is called in sources, this prescription makes sure uh, that uh, users of thought are notified about, about, um, uh, about uh, vulnerability in this uh, function and the severity of uh, the notification is based on a recommendation type uh, that users ask by the resolver. Uh, example number six uh, checks uh, runtime environment. So if uh, people uh, use uh, environment where they have GPU, uh, uh, so GPU is not null, and uh, they do not have CUDA version properly set up, so uh, the client tool does not detect CUDA version, then uh, they are notified that there is no CUDA available, and eventually other pipeline units will uh, make sure that, for example, TensorFlow GPU is not resolved because there is no uh, GPU uh, to be utilized. That was uh, example number six. And let's move on to our last example uh, that is resolving uh, Python packages considering RPM packages available in the runtime environment. Uh, in this example, uh, we expect that Git, uh, the RPM, is present in the runtime environment. Uh, 
If it is not present, uh, then this uh, pipeline unit of type C filters out uh, packages uh, or any versions of package Git Python. That means uh, that the resolver will try to find another resolution path uh, with uh, or without Git Python because Git Python will not work on the host because of missing native uh, dependency uh, in the runtime environment. Uh, then you can see uh, this information is printed to logs. So uh, if uh, the resolution fails to find another resolution path, uh, people will still see, or users will still uh, see that Git Python uh, is uh, um, causing uh, troubles when resolving uh, software packages as uh, Git is not present uh, in the runtime environment. If you are interested in this uh, prescription concept, feel free to browse documentation and also uh, feel free to browse the repository that holds uh, uh, these prescriptions for open source packages. We uh, have bots that automatically update these prescriptions, but also uh, some user input uh, will be valuable as uh, if this database grows. That means uh, that open source uh, Python ecosystem will gain uh, quality and the resolver thought uh, can resolve uh, better software considering knowledge about Python ecosystem. So this way uh, we welcome you in contributing to uh, Thought Station prescriptions repository, either directly opening pull requests and implementing uh, prescriptions if you're interested in this technology, but uh, feel free to also just report uh, any issues that uh, you spot in uh, Python applications. Uh, the documentation for the declarative interface for the resolver is uh, available also on .station.ninja. And I've already mentioned we have a homepage that is .station.ninja, which links to uh, our YouTube channel. So feel free to subscribe. And uh, all, you get also link to our uh, Twitter. We have .station uh, uh, Twitter handle without dash. And here you can find uh, updates uh, uh, and pro information about progress uh, when it comes to development. Feel free to also reach out to us uh, on these media. And this way, I would like to thank you and uh, see you next time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Frida, for the talk. Um, folks, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. And we have Frito here for another uh, two, three minutes to answer them. Okay, so if you have questions, I will be in the chat. And this way, I would like to thank you and uh, hopefully you find Todd uh, valuable. Thank you. All right, thanks for your.